folks, I got to apologize for the audio on this. It's really bad, but um, I'm not going to re-record it. Just have a listen if you want, and I'll see y'all later. Hello, folks. On my way to work, so I thought I'd do some reflection on my favorite predator. You could call it my least favorite predator, the predator that I find most entertaining and the predator that disturbs me the most. Although, Lauren Armstrong comes a close second to this because I've recently, through the uh, or the great Babspeak channel, I've been uh, introduced to the extended chat log of Lauren Armstrong and I'll, I'll talk about him later. But everybody talks about Lauren. Dustin McFetridge, at first, he, he is my favorite predator as uh, as the little puppet dog used to say, my favorite predator to poop on, would be Dustin because immediately you look at Dustin and you see a kid because he comes off as younger because he's in his mid to late 20s, I believe. But you look at him and he comes off as very childish. I won't say childlike. He absolutely is not childlike, not in his appearance or in the way he uh, speaks or his mind. But he definitely comes off as childish. He talks about his mama. And and also, of course, he's he's crippled. I don't think people use the term crippled anymore. You're probably not supposed to. He's definitely disabled. He's got cerebral palsy. And so uh, I, I don't know the extent of it. I don't know anything about that disease. I'm not a doctor. Obviously, he has a lot of trouble walking. And one of his hands arms hand, and up to the hand I don't know it, it doesn't work correctly so it has a twisted appearance now you're a you're a guy or a gal and you're watching TCAP and let's just say I don't know let's just say you're a you're a regional manager for pep boys You've got a couple hundred employees you're responsible for the last thing in the world you want to do is rag on make fun of a poor, mentally challenged, physically challenged kid. And then you watch the inter the police interviews and you realize that Justin, <laughs> I did the same thing that the, the agent did, you realize that Dustin is not mentally uh, handicapped at all. I, I personally don't believe it. Now you could say that a no moral compass or just being an evil person is a mental disability. But what I'm talking about is he knows what he's doing. Absolutely he does. He makes videos for um, some has-been wrestler. He drives. Um, he, he functions. And, of course, he built his computer. Dustin is not a stupid person. I would say ignorant, perhaps. I don't know about that. But I would definitely say he is not stupid. I don't think he's a rocket scientist either. But let's get that mental disability out the way. He's not mentally disabled. Now, if you have your faculties mentally, then where, where, how could you excuse what Dustin did? Dustin is an example of, all, of a trait that all the predators have. If Dustin could... Have, no, have sexual relations. I don't know if anything could be considered normal with Dustin. If Dustin could have sexual relations with a, with, a, with a woman, I think that he certainly would. He was married, so he did. But the reason that a person like Dustin will go after a child is because physically, I believe he is not a small man. He is disabled, but he certainly he drives, he gets around. I think if you look at his prison picture, he's got a strange build due to his uh, disability. But he's kind of a hulking kind of guy. If, if you, I absolutely believe that he could force himself on a 13-year-old or a 14-year-old. Now, a full-grown woman would probably kick his ass, but that's not the that's not what we're talking about here. And um, I think that Dustin is physically capable. But back to what I was saying. The predators, for whatever reason, either they feel that the a 13-year-old girl or boy would mentally not be up to the challenge of opposing, you know, of, of 
fighting back against what they want from them, or they're physically, they're either mentally or physically unable to dominate the predator. The predator can dominate them mentally or physically because of their age. And so Dustin, that's exactly what Dustin's going for here. He fished around on the internet, and I didn't do chat rooms back then. Uh, 2005, 2007, I don't know that I've ever been in a chat room. I didn't start talking to people online until Facebook came along, and then I just posted pictures of my family. And then eventually, sometimes on instant messenger, I'll have a conversation, which is, to me, exactly like te texting. I didn't, I never went into a chat room or went into a, I don't know, a fishing chat room, a hunting chat room, or whatever. Uh, I'm a big uh, science fiction geek, and I, I never went into a chat room to talk about that. I talk to actual people about that, and I watch stuff on on uh, video. <laughs> Probably we're talking VHS back then. And uh, so, I don't know anything about the chat rooms, but... Uh, Dustin also another thought about Dustin is is his his chat was in, was very explicit and very disturbing and again if you want to talk about threat level I think Dustin is the most frightening of all the predators almost because you don't think of it when you first see him but he, I, I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, if you want to see or hear his chat log or his phone calls or any of that with the decoy, there's a lot of channels in the TCAP world that cover that. But uh, Dustin knew immediately that when he was caught, it was time to turn on the waterworks. If you look at it, the excellent videos of his police interview, and it's good that we have an extensive one for Dustin, um, he immediately starts crying. And he's, again, he has that, that childish affect. He, he can turn that on, like, Oh, I'm just a cripple boy. I have cerebral palsy. I need my cane. I can't make it without my mama. And uh, the average person, if you didn't know the backstory, if you weren't familiar with the case, you would think, you know, why are they picking on this guy? Well, what harm could this guy do? And that's the whole point of this. A lot of harm. I mean, just the thought of a guy with cerebral palsy going at you with a razor. I mean, I think it was an electric razor, but I don't know. I, I, I think that Dustin is, is truly frightening. If you want to really get scared one night, think of Dustin alone in a room with one of your kids or one of your nieces or nephews or grandkids or whatever. It, it, it is a frightening thought. And again, that's who, if Dustin were going to prey on a group of people, it would have to be people weaker and slower than himself. And that is exactly who he targeted. Now, all states have very strict laws about child pornography. Remember, Dustin got more years for child pornography than he got for the predators, the, to catch a predator sting. And he got those years in his community, wherever that was. I think he was from Kentucky. And again, I've watched TCAP a lot, but I am not a, a, a TCAP historian. I'm not a uh, uh, Dateline NBC to catch a predator expert. I just kind of talk about it and look at it. And uh, I think, I mean, Dustin, I think after he did a couple of years, I want to say, from what he did when he crossed state lines, when he finished doing that, he did uh, more years back in his hometown. Because he had images, many images of child pornography. Now let's talk about that just for a second here. Not that it's a pleasant subject. Um, they would have done the same to Hard Chuck uh, for, for doing that. Somebody is producing this child pornography. Somebody is making it. We find it, rightfully so, we find it so offensive that simply possessing it is a serious crime. You know, adult pornography, eh. 
as long as the girls, and it's mostly girls, we all know that, but let's just say as long as the people involved are of age, we're not really worried about pornography. But child pornography, oh my God. Wait, you, you, you can use your imagination and figure out where these kids are coming from and the damage being done. I think adults who are in the porn industry are damaged. That's just a belief of mine. I don't, I don't, I don't have any friends that did that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But I don't think that's a good thing for an adult to have to go through. I, no, no, not too many adults go through the porn industry in their 40s. So if you're, a, if you're in 18 to 25 and you've been an adult actor or actress, I cannot imagine that bodes well for success in life afterwards. But a child? Oh, good Lord, that's sick. You just want to you wanna be part of a strike team that goes into where they make this stuff. You want to save the kids and you want to kill the people doing it. Now, we're not going to do that, and that's not how, well, it's not how society works. But anyway, Dustin was guilty of having a lot of this porn. So whether or not he ever went to the Sting House and met Chris Hansen. Had the authorities found out another way, or if maybe he brought his wrestling friend over and somehow or another got ratted out or outed for having the child porn, he was going to go to jail. Didn't matter if his mama loved him. It didn't matter about his cerebral palsy or that goofy vehicle he drove up in. He was going to go to jail. And my final thought is Dustin McFetridge is a monster. He is a, 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 a modern-day monster. If you look at him, if you hear him talk, he's a little goofy. He's a little funny. He's entertaining. Make no mistake, Dustin McFetridge is a monster. He deserved far more years in jail than he ultimately got. And he may never make another appearance in the news, he may never harm another person. Good God, I hope that he doesn't. But I believe he will always be a monster. And that was the great thing about To Catch a Predator. The, 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 the decoys are all in their 30s now. Bad stuff happened to Chris Hansen by his own actions. Uh, the rest of the, the people involved have gone on to do other things. But what To Catch a Predator showed us was in plain sight, in our society, in all walks of life, there are monsters. And if you don't remain vigilant to guard your children, guard yourself, guard your stuff, if you don't remain vigilant, the monsters are going to win. Anyway, that's all I have for today, folks. I am Arashi Neko, and I'm signing off.